the gospel on this Palm Sunday from St. Mark chapter 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem near Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt. It's never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them that Jesus had said they were allowed to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And as he sat on it, many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who were following were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The gospel of our Lord. God's word is our great heritage. God's word continues with Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, though who he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, the word of our Lord. My birthday falls each autumn on October 26th, and since I was old enough to carry a gun, I have spent most of my birthdays hunting ducks or pheasants, and this past year was no exception. In a moment, you'll see a video clip. It's a glimpse of my most recent birthday, which I spent hunting with dear friends out in northwestern North Dakota. What you will see is my Labrador Kobuk. She's located a pheasant, and she goes on point. It continues with the flush of the bird and a spectacular example of my expert marksmanship. Let's watch. Kobuk, get the bird. Oh no, could I miss that bird? Made me nervous, I think. (laughs) He's alive and well. (laughs) I missed him! Happy birthday. That's why they call it hunting. Happy birthday. (laughs) 
For those of you who are fisher people out there, I believe that's called catch and release. <laughs> Later that night, my friends and I celebrated over a meal of less fortunate pheasants as we shared tales of the hunt and enjoyed each other's friendship. Following dinner, my friends surprised me with a birthday song and a cake decorated with more candles than I cared to count. Later, they all raised their glasses, hailed the birthday boy, and exhorted me to share the secrets of life and longevity since I was the oldest hunter in the group. After a grateful pause, I wiped a tear or two from my eyes and responded with these words, Marry well and up. Pick good friends and tend to those friendships. And always strive to give lavishly and receive graciously. Now granted, the first two secrets of life are more a matter of good fortune, and not everyone can attain them. However, the last two are totally within one's control. We can, all of us can, give lavishly and receive graciously, whether we're young or old, rich or poor, joyous or grieving. We can all choose to give lavishly and receive graciously because we are not born winners or losers. We are born choosers. And when we choose to give lavishly and receive graciously, we discover the secret of a full and abundant life. As Jesus prepared to enter Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday, he sent two disciples on an errand to teach them and I think humanity, a profound lesson on giving and receiving. And sometime, somehow amidst the hosannas, we miss this little exchange. He sent them to fetch a donkey, which he said would be tied outside the city. When the owners ask why you're taking them, tell them that the Lord has need of it. Tell them also that it will return to them immediately. Talk about lavish giving. The owners of the donkey, I presume, didn't even know Jesus. And yet the Spirit led them to loan out their most valuable asset to some strangers with only the promise that they would get it back soon. This is so absurd that it would be like a farmer loaning out his best and most expensive four-wheel drive tractor. Or a construction owner loaning out the payloader. Or imagine you loaning the family car or your prized pickup truck to some homeless wanderer simply because they said, the Lord needs it. And oh, by the way, we'll get it back to you right away. Wink, wink. Remember the secret of life? Give lavishly. Receive graciously. So what does this all have to do with us this morning? What can it mean in our daily walk? One, I submit to you that scripture is very clear that all we have and will have belongs to the Lord. As the old hymn says, all that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. And two, there will be times in our life when the Lord comes calling, asking for us to give back what, he, what has been his already, simply because he has need for it. Could be our time, our money, our stuff, maybe even our very lives. And three, when Jesus comes asking, he comes with a promise, just like in today's gospel story. We will receive the value of what we give returned back to us. Now for the owners in today's story, I presume that was the donkey. But yet through their lavish giving, even though they didn't know it, they contributed to the salvation of humankind as well as themselves had they chose to believe later on. 
by assisting Jesus on his way to the cross, big things happen when Jesus comes asking. We don't always know how our giving efforts will be blessed. It may be as simple as the great feeling we've had as a congregation as we have been attempting to make the lives of these Ethiopian children just a little better by giving them a clinic they don't have. By the way, Mike's here. Do we have, do we have some information? Great. You have indeed given lavishly. And the children living on in Toto Mountain will receive graciously $10,371 uh, after today's offering. So how about we give three cheers for Mount and Toto. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Thank you so much. God bless. That was enough. That's the immediate payback that Jesus promises. But yet there is something we don't know. We might be keeping a child alive in Africa who will rise up to leadership and will do great things for humankind in that continent or maybe even the world. Maybe, just maybe, one of those children will find a cure for something. But we trust our Lord from that. All of us can give lavishly, and sometimes we as a congregation help you to do that. Today, you can give lavishly. There are flowers on the altar, and in front of each one of those flowers, a card that Jess has addressed to one of our folks who couldn't be here today. After church, you can come up, grab a flower, grab an envelope, and deliver that either today or tomorrow. And believe me, you will receive an instant, instant blessing from doing that. The blessings could even be much greater. You might receive news of a financial windfall, perhaps a promotion, a healing of an illness, or maybe most importantly, the reconciliation of a relationship. It's one of the things I keep praying. The reality is blessings come in all shapes and sizes and ways. But Jesus is clear that they do come to those who honor the requests of God. In the Bible, the Lord invites us to put him to the test. I invite you, challenge you, along with myself, to do just that. Get out ahead of the Lord. Find a way to give before he comes asking and certainly respond lavishly when he does ask. Give lavishly from what you've been blessed with, and then wait in joyous anticipation of his blessings. And then remember when blessings come, large or small, receive them graciously. It's my secret to an abundant life. But it's okay. You can go share it with somebody else.